Welcome, Welcome to, Jay to Jay and Beyond the Rocks. Rocks. I'm, I'm Jay. And I'm, I'm B. B. For part. part. And, and, oh, oh, damn it. it. You gave, gave away my secret, secret identity. identity. Uh, uh, so, this so this is a show, show which glorifies the responsible, responsible use of alcohol, alcohol by, by teaching, teaching you to make, make a variety of mixed, mixed drinks. drinks. And, and uh, uh, as, as you watch, watch the show, the idea here is that, here is that you'll, you'll make mixed, mixed drinks, drinks while, while we teach you, and then, then you drink, drink them, them with, with the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so forth. And, and we feature various different kinds of mixed drinks, drinks and, uh, and uh, different little special uh, features, features and so forth. But, but this, this week, um, we, we have, have a, a show which, which is kind of unusual, unusual in, in its, its ordinariness. ordinariness. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, it, it's, that, that is, is to say, it is not... A special, a special episode. episode. We, we, we had, had a special, special episode planned, planned. Yeah. Yeah. mind you. <laughs> but but th th as, 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 as with the best laid plans of mice and men, men it went awry. Yeah. 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 We, uh, basically, basically, we were, we were going to go over to a friend's, friend's house, house and he was, he was having a beer brewing, brewing party. party. And, and uh, we, we tell, tell you a little, little bit about this. We were going to have a special beer brewing episode. But just watch this clip and you'll understand. This is a little video from a few days ago. And this will explain all. So here I am on my motorcycle. I'm getting ready to go over to Russ Levitt's house. Russ is one of the great hardened criminals of our day, our day and age. Uh, he is a local resident of, of Bloomington. He lives on a dead end street. You see that right there? That's that dead end street sign. Um, that's where Russ lives on that dead end street there. And uh, I'm going over to his house for this beer party that he's having. He's going to brew some beer. And I'm kind of frightened about what might happen. You know, he is a criminal, a, a very dangerous man. He was in a couple of bands um, locally. He was in the Rods and Cones, which you have heard of. And uh, he was also in, uh, what was it, Money, Greed, and Power. So we're going to go over to his house, and we're going to find out what's going on at this beer party. So let me see if I can figure out a way to drive this motorcycle while holding my camera. So that was that was that caused quite that a problem. That. Um, that was a about you just witnessed about a nine hundred dollar video camera going kaput. It belonged to me, and uh, I was good. not happy about it. The same day, Bart had uh, ended up in the hospital for various and sundry reasons. We'll talk about that later. Um, but uh, you know, if you if you feel sorry for us, um, you know, you're not allowed to send us a thing of value in the mail. So do not send us a video camera. And while you're at it, do not send a bottle of J&B Scotch to Post Office Box 3241 Bloomington, Bloomington, Indiana, 47402. That's the address on the screen. Don't send that. Don't send a video camera, especially no J&B Scotch. But anyway, um, speaking of, of alcohol, you know, this is a show, after all, which glorifies the responsible use of alcohol, as we stated earlier. Um, Watch this. I'm, we're going to make a drink. Okay. All right. In, celebra in celebration of ordinariness, we are going to make a drink um, at this exceedingly high bar. Can you tell that this is this bar is like like chest level for me? It's just it's messing with my brain. So we're going to make a drink in celebration of ordinariness. This is McCorm McCormick's American Blended Whiskey. Now we don't want to endorse this particular brand of whiskey. However. We are having a shot of whiskey, preferably an American whiskey, but, you know, if you've only got Scotch whiskey or vodka or, or you know, Kahlua, I suppose, just have a shot of something with us. But make sure you feel perfectly ordinary when you do it. Okay, so you just pour it in the shot glass. Now, yes, we recognize this is not a, uh, a, a mixed drink, but then, you know, mixed drinks are, are often considered special drinks. This is not a special episode. This is not a special drink. I think someone put Drano in that. So th that was not a very special drink. I had it myself, and I will testify that it was far from special. But this is our not special episode, so that that is, alas, 
quite uh, appropriate. And, and I, I find it highly ironic that you would be, uh, since this is our uh, not not a special episode in hey, any look, way. Hey, it's, look, it's our beer toter. Oh, now, now there's a drink that's not very special at all, just beer. Plain old beer. What could be better than that? Um, Miller Genuine Draft, in fact. What could be less special than that? But I think it's ironic that you have the CD, <laughs> the Compact specials. Disc. The specials. Yes, I have that. It, it belongs to me, in fact. I am the owner. And now, now there's a little story that goes Certified with this. Certified owner. Did you, you were playing this the other day. Yeah. And uh, somebody, uh, well, a okay. celebrity called on yeah. the phone. Actually, yes, a celebrity did call me on the phone. It felt, it felt very nice. Joanne Worley. Who? Yeah, actually, Joanne Worley called me. She's, uh, she was a star on Laugh In and on Hollywood Squares and, uh, and all these places, all these different shows in the, in the 70s, comedy shows. She, was, she always laughed a lot, and that was kind of her gig was laughing. Um, had kind of dark hair, you know. You've probably seen her somewhere. So she called you. She called me while on the you telephone. were listening to the specials. The specials. I was listening to this here CD, um, and uh, and she called me on the telephone. And uh, when when I she called it actually an hour earlier than I, I was expecting her call. I was supposed to interview her for an article for the for the Bloomington Voice, not to endorse that or any other local uh, independent news weekly, but uh, I. She called me, and uh, I was listening to the specials, and what happened? I Back just out can't now. remember. Back out now. Um, so, so she you called were me, to the and specials, and she asked you what she you were she looking. said. She said, "What is that I hear in the background?" And I said, "Well, uh, it's the specials." And she said, "Well, you've been doing your homework, haven't you?" And see, I was I was really flustered at the time because I thought that you know that. Well, I was confused because she was calling an hour early and I hadn't written my questions down and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't really think about it at the time, but in retrospect... It seems like a very odd thing to say, doesn't it? Yes. Why would she say that I was doing my homework to have the specials on? Unless there's some connection between Joanne Worley and, and the, the specials. specials. Now, if you know what the connection between Joanne Worley and the specials is, we would like you to uh, write to, to us. Write to us. Actually, just just Post so you know. Now, can you get this in macro here? Because um, I, I would like to point out that these that she is definitely not one of the characters in the specials. You see that? Hey, who's that man stealing all those tubes of paper away from us? You getting it? Yeah, it's all it's in there. Okay. Yeah. So. so as you can see, Joanne Worley is not a member of the specials per se. However, um, she is, you know, it was, she, she seemed to imply that there was some kind of connection. If you understand what the connection is, if you have any inkling or hint or clue what the connection between Joanne Worley and the specials might be, write to us at P.O. Box 3241 Bloomington, Indiana, 47402, mind you. Oh, two. So, <coughs> so Joanne Worley was uh, on Laughing, Laughing, nineteen seventies, a vacuous comedy show. Yeah, not not to say that she was a vacuous person, but you know the show, it was you know it was just kind of lame comedy. I, it was not known for its high degree of topical uh, humor. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of stupid. It was not considered. Kind of a relevant cutting edge. Vacuous. Now there's a word. Vacuous. V-A-C-U-O-U-S. What does it mean? It means uh, kind of like a vacuum of intelligence. Hmm. So that would seem to typify a great many comedy programs on TV. Yeah. Not only yeah. Laugh-In, but also The Mod Squad. Yeah. Or um, The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Was that comedy or was that more? Yeah, I guess that was comedy. I mean, the, the Brady Bunch? Yeah. No, no. It well, was it, more a docudrama. Yeah, yeah. Um, cops. Cops. Hard copy. Yeah. Now, there's um, some vacuous comedy. Now, hard copy, though, that's not... Is that supposed to be comedy, or is it just funny? It's de, de facto comedy. Yeah, de facto comedy. De facto. Now, there's a word. By the way, if you... You probably notice that you keep hearing those footsteps in the background going up and down. And... It, we're camera up operator attic. Eric, if you will please swivel the camera around to the other side. There he is. Look, there is the perpetrator, Steve Bolin. And what 
Now, now this guy has had stuff up in our attic since we moved in two months ago. And what night does he choose to unload his stuff? The one night that we're videotaping up in our attic, he has to come up and get his stuff. But so, we've caught him in the act. Look, you, the if, light has flustered him. He if, doesn't know which way to go. If you find yourself distracted by the sounds of somebody moving in the background, write you, to P.O. Box 3241 to complain. So, anyway. But uh, if, if you do write to P.O. Box 3241, please do not send a bottle of J&B Scotch because that would be bad. That would be bad news indeed. So, vacuous comedy shows the past 20 years. That's what we're talking about. Um, Actually, this, we were... Now, there's this show... Is, is up to date. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's, a, there's a show on right now, actually. Uh, you can see it on Channel 4, I believe. Not to endorse any kind of particular TV station, but um, it's, a, it's a show about this... I mean, the basic gist of it is there's this, this little girl. She's about two feet tall, and, uh, and she makes funny face... Well, ostensibly funny faces on camera. I've never seen that. Um, it's it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. She's this little blonde freak um, and oh, it, it, the show, I've just never been bothered so much by a show and yet it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be funny. Now, I mean, it, it usually comes right before Married with Children which is occasionally funny. At first I was kind of offended by it but, but now I realize that that's the entire point. Um, another vacuous comedy show. J and B on the Rocks, Tuesday nights at 11, Bloomington Community Access Television. Art as stupidity, stupidity as art. <coughs> um, so you've seen Wayne's World. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to point out at this juncture that I have not uh, ever seen Wayne's World. Yeah. Not, 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 hold on a second. Not only have I not seen the movie, I've never seen the skit on Saturday Night Live, and until just recently, Sunday. Jay here, the day the day that I busted my video camera, until the day that Jay busted the v video camera, he also had not seen Wayne's World, either the movie or, or the, the sketch. Skit. But all that changed. Yeah, yeah, all that changed on Sunday. So um, what, what kind of an experience down, was that? Sat down and for watched you, it. Watched the the film. It was. Uh, it it was a funny movie. I I, I was actually quite impressed at, at how they they managed to to create a, a a genuinely entertaining movie out of no no plot. There was just not a plot. Um, so it was postmodern in yes. the sense that it was all structure and no content. Exactly. But uh, other than that, um, it was. I found myself really freaked out and frightened a couple of times. Um, because of their uh, th some some very striking and and never planned similarities between the two shows. For instance, they often used uh, tr titles like um, "Help Cam" was one of them. I remember seeing and and other kinds of blank cam uh, or wait, it would be blank cam uh, titling. Like, like we often have titles that come on the screen. Yeah, we have titles here and titles there. Yeah. Um, there goes that old telephone of ours. So, um, but it, other than that, there, were, there was also, uh, they, they did, they used video feedback in their, in, in their, um, in the title of their show, which was, which freaked me out because Bart did that just last week, um, for our show. And there was one other thing, oh, <laughs> a little, uh, at one point, either Wayne or Garth said, that's what she said. And that's that's kind of kind of a little joke that we've we've used a couple of times, a very tongue in cheek joke. Um, we we would like to point out. Um, I'm just I'm 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 continuing to ramble on, hoping, hoping against all of my my instincts um, that that B will return and and that uh, all of my my difficulties will be solved and that I will be able to 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 rest my vocal cords. I've got. I've got to, um... Uh, excuse me, Joe? Yes. Jay? For the record? Yes. For the record, uh, I'd like to say that uh, I haven't seen Wayne's World either. Oh, 
this is camera operator S, and he has never seen seen Wayne's World either. Now, doesn't that just freak your mind out completely? So, who was that on the old telephone? B. That was Margaret. Oh, how she? Uh, she's just fine, and uh, she wants you to either give her a call or she's just going to stop by on her way to the library to study. Oh, she's going to study. Well, Life of a student. Uh, well, we're not students, and so we rarely study. We are, in fact, slackers. <laughs> yeah, I make about $150 a week, and he makes about $100 a week. But actually, there's a story to this. How much, how much money are you going to make next week? I don't know. What do you mean? Uh, oh, none. None? What do you mean you don't know? None. He's quitting his job, man. That's he right. is going out on the streets. No longer will I be able to say that I earn $100 a week. I'll just have to say that I don't earn anything because I'll be unemployed. Because um, um, I'm quitting. Okay. So if anybody out there in, in viewer land is, uh, has, has a job of meaning for old B here, uh, uh, send send yeah, let information. Us know. Let us know because it's not that I want to be unemployed so much as that I want to find a different job from the one I'm doing. Yeah, that's P.O. Box three two four one Bloomington, Indiana four seven four zero two. Send send any information about uh, in, employment any opportunities employment or money making opportunities. opportunities that you have. If you, for example, have watched this show faithfully, like a mm -hmm. religious zealot, mm -hmm. and you're thinking to yourself, man. Those guys, those guys, I would pay them money to just entertain me. Or uh, or I have an inside into the industry, and I know a way that these guys could, you know, start making some real bucks. Just let us know, and we'll be happy to pursue that dream. Yeah, but, uh, you know, you don't need to send a bottle of J&B scotch in order to entice him into this job. And we would, in fact ask that you not send a bottle of J&B scotch. We discourage um, it. Because that would be sending a thing of value. And uh, by the way, have you noticed how much I've been rocking back and forth viciously and, 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 and with great vim and, and vitality? In this, uh, this Start it over here. So, here is an art video for your edification. Enjoy this now. Please. Please. I really don't know about no other countries. I really don't know about no other countries. Uh, I am, in fact, an epileptic, and uh, I take Dilantin. It's a it's a medication. I take 400 milligrams a day. And that is an anticonvulsant, and it keeps me from having seizures. However, uh, occasionally I forget to take my medicine, uh, which is what happened. Um, actually, it happened on Saturday, and on Sunday, I paid. Um, <laughs> Dearly. Yeah, I, I, I was having a seizure. Uh, afterwards, I woke up, you know, dazed and confused, not knowing what had happened or where I was. Um, in fact, I w was in a friend's room. Uh, but I didn't know where I was, and uh, shortly thereafter I had another seizure and yet another one, and eventually I was rushed off to the hospital uh, after having made quite a, a mess, <laughs> actually. Um, yeah, a um, little, you, little bit little J bit. Jay of... laughs, but it's not easy for someone <coughs> like me to talk about this. Um, sure, someone, someone like like him who suffers from uh, from no epileptic uh, fits or, or convulsions, it's it's easy for him to, to stand contemptuously and sneer at the problems of, of a, the disadvantaged minority like myself. Yeah. Okay, B, so is there any way that you, like, uh, know when, when a seizure is about to hit, about to strike? Actually, I'm glad you asked that because um, we have a special vocabulary word. Ah, oh, vocab word. Yes. <laughs> this week, uh, our vocabulary word is aura. 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 Now, O-R-A-L. No. 
A-U-R-A. This is a word which, with which you oh. are probably familiar. <laughs> You've probably heard New Agers talking about people's auras and so forth. Yeah. Uh, however, there's a specific meaning that this word um, has when used in the context of epilepsy. Uh, an epileptic person who knows when they're going to have a seizure before they actually have it is said to have an aura. Mm. Now, about obviously, um, if you know that you're going to have a seizure beforehand, you have quite an edge over those who, who don't. I, you know, there's two ways that, that things can happen. You can either just fall down and uh, start shaking, mm -hmm. or you can realize that you're going to have a seizure and then you can just lie down and, and get in a safe place uh, before you have your seizure. Yeah. And if you have an aura, that it allows you to do that. Hmm. So having an aura is a very important thing, and it can take many, many different forms. Mm -hmm. uh, about 50% of epileptics have auras. Okay. And I am... Fall into the... I am in one of the lucky uh, 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 half <laughs> that, has, uh, that has an aura. Mm -hmm. My aura takes the form of a point of light which seems infinitely far away, but uh, of many colors, and uh, which just kind of appears on the horizon and won't won't dissipate. And uh, so you until you after I have a seizure. Basically. Yes, it's like a hallucination. It's much like um, Saul on the road to Tarsus. Mm -hmm. Saw the blinding light right from and, and heard God's voice. Uh huh. Uh, to me, when I read that, it sounds like oh, that guy was having an epileptic seizure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to me like a miracle of God, but something else entirely. Yeah, now that's that's something that you would only know if you're a religious scholar, but what are we if not religious scholars? We're back at this big high bar, the one that the one that comes up to my chest level, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make yet another ordinary drink. This is in fact so ordinary, it's the same drink that we had earlier. We're gonna have another shot of whiskey. Bad whiskey at that. Bad whiskey at that. Yeah. This stuff tastes like they diluted it with with water. Well that's I guess that was that would be what one would dilute with if one were to dilute, but that is nonetheless my impression. As it were. I would pronounce that as distinctly potable. And on that note, we'd like to introduce segment six of Disturbed Monkey Love. Six.
last drink because he's a wimp. I, on the other hand, persevered and drank my last shot. <laughs> Do you want to know why that is? It is because I am hardcore. And so in a moment, I'm going to put on my cardigan sweater for just a moment, off camera, just so that I feel better. Hard time. So, Hello, and welcome to Bitch Booth. Bring the winner, we had this is a booth in which we stand and tell you about something which really pisses us off. This is going to be a weekly segment on this show. Yeah, we're going to just stand here and bitch in this booth, and that's why it's called Bitch Booth. And this week we're pissed as hell, because this is Bitch Booth. Okay, so so this is, this is my fishbowl now. This and has been brought to us by... By uh, uh, this is Jay. Now she, you may, if you have been following us assiduously, you may recognize this face, kind of, but not really. The reason being because we've had her sister on the show, actually, um, another Jay, uh, uh, different They're person though. Yeah, house. they have they have separate skull cases, and so they are thus separate individuals, um, not twins, just. Same skull case, okay. All right. All right, so uh, J sub N. Actually, I'm J sub N as well, but but just to, just to keep you in line, this is her and I am me. Um, so, so, to anyway, the matter at hand. Is, uh, speaking, of, is, uh, speaking of drinking, now, now, were I to fill the, if, you know, this kind of looks like a brandy sniffer, snifter. If I were to fill this up with brandy, though, and drink it all, I would probably be so drunk that I would vomit. Now, vomit has kind of, we've been talking a little bit about vomit in this episode. Um, do you have anything to say about vomit? Well, you asked me about that, and uh, I was thinking long and hard, and I'll tell you, Joe, I'm not somebody, mm -hmm. is that a mistake? Uh, not, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I can do that. Nobody <laughs> ever makes a mistake on j &B <laughs> on the rocks. I'll tell you. Um, I'm not a person who throws up very often. Mm -hmm. I have a really strong stomach. I threw up on my 21st mm -hmm. birthday, but before that, I can't remember a time when I threw up. So mm -hmm. I just tell you that it's my sister who throws up all the time. We've got Your sister. Wonderful stories. She's thrown up in 20, well, between 16 and 20 countries. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. She's wow. Up in That's quite countries. impressive. She sets foot on foreign soil and just. Up. <coughs> wow, just that's terrific. Spontaneously hurt. Now, is, is this is this because she drinks too much or because she? It's well, it happened when she was little, so we'd have to count that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. She just uh, doesn't doesn't agree with her. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like motion sickness, I guess. Well, yeah, foreign sickness, yeah. air, the water, and like one time we were on a, an island in Greece, and she threw up for 24 hours continuously. Wow, wow. Kept she must have away. a big stomach. Well, you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, and it was amazing. She kept us all up. So. Well, that, that was, was pretty ordinary. Yeah. This has been just a, a completely unspecial show. Um, we, we we're proud to say that we we feel that we've yeah we we're proud to say that 
that we feel that we deliver, um, or we have the need to deliver something special to you on a weekly basis, Tuesday nights at 11 on Channel 3. But program, every once in yeah. a while, something slips through that's just not special at all. Yeah, and that was this week. So for this week, that is this episode that we're talking about. It's J and B on the rocks. J and B on the rocks. Tuesday nights at 11. Hoist your tankards high. Hoist your can of beer on high. And silly your face forever. Our best years have passed us by. The golden age of the leather. Yeah. Lennon, isn't it? Leather. Leather? Yeah. Do you recognize it? No. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, how did you, how the fuck did you know what it was? <laughs> I thought you were making it up, I guess. It's a blue or it's a blue or it's a blue song.